When I first discovered ReZero, something I never expected to see was Lolly Amelia head patting Betelgeuse. But as we know, anything's possible in ReZero Season 2. Except, of course, playing the opening. To be honest, I'd much rather keep getting these extended 29-minute episodes, but I am starting to feel bad for the singer. I mean, she made this whole song for them and they're just refusing to play it. I feel like that's kind of a slap in the face. We did get to hear the ending for the first time, which was nice, but it also made me sad because I really didn't want this episode to end. We got some new characters, an epic transition scene, a stunning cliffhanger, chibi Dona, and a lot of information about Amelia's past. But as always, this episode left us with even more questions than we had before. Who are Amelia's parents? Why is the witch cult being so nice? What's inside the seal? And how did Amelia get a basketball? Straight motherfucking ballin'. A long time ago, back when Amelia was still a lolly, she lived in a peaceful elven settlement located in Ellier Forest, the same setting as Frozen Bonds. The village was mostly normal, except Amelia was often locked inside a room for protection, which by the way is literally the same thing Subaru did to her in the Wrath If story, so right off the bat we're already seeing some red flags. We're introduced to Amelia's mother figure, an elf named Fortuna. She may not be Amelia's biological mother, but she's still a biological milf as far as I'm concerned. In fact, I might even change my name to Fortunut. In reality though, Fortuna is the younger sister of Amelia's biological father, so for anyone who's still confused about Amelia's Amelia's family tree, this week's episode made it a lot easier to understand. Amelia is the witch, but she's also the witch's daughter, so the witch is her mother, and the witch's mother is Amelia, whose mother figure is Fortuna, who's also her aunt, and her aunt's brother is her dad, who's married to her mom, but her other dad is Puck, and Subaru is her daddy. In conclusion, Amelia has too many fucking parents. If you saw Frozen Bonds, you might remember this frame. It was very short, but Betelgeuse did in fact appear in that OVA. Though I should stop calling him Betelgeuse, because apparently his old name was Juice. Juice. We haven't seen much of him recently, so I'd almost forgotten how talented his voice actor really is. <laughs> Both Juice and Fortuna delivered impeccable performances, and together they made this my favorite episode of Sword Art Online. In case the anime didn't make it obvious enough, the light novel confirmed it by saying Fortuna smiled at him affectionately. And knowing what we know about the witch cult, it was pretty shocking to learn that Fortuna was in love with the archbishop responsible for about half of the witch cult's murders. Like really, Fortuna? Come on, are you serious? But from what it looks like, the witch cult was actually helping the village by delivering supplies, so it got me thinking that maybe it wasn't always an evil organization. Juice appeared to be relatively normal, at least until he met Amelia and burst into tears. It was almost like Juice valued Amelia the same way Betelgeuse valued Satella. <gasps> So either Juice was the ultimate lollycon, she looked good for a four year old, or Amelia was just very special for some reason. Fortuna was described as a guardian, meaning she's responsible for watching over the seal, which is a big mysterious door that can only be opened by SEAL Team 6. If you want my opinion, it's either a lolly dungeon or the final resting place of Minerva, but it could also be something a lot scarier. Whatever it is, there's obviously a reason it was locked inside the seal, so it could be very dangerous to let it out. In the light novel, it's described as exempt from the laws of the world, and what I like about that description is that it also applies to Subaru. For some reason, he can see the unseen hands, he can remember people who've been erased, and he can die and come back to life. It's obvious that the laws of the world do not apply to him, so whatever the seal is might have something in common with Subaru. Oh, and Fortuna said that everyone in her family has mean eyes, which is also something Subaru can relate to. His mean eyes that he got from his mother are mentioned quite often in the novels, and I just thought that was interesting, though it probably doesn't mean anything. Another reason this trial was so difficult for Amelia is because she's gotta watch over Juice and Fortuna in the same way that they watched over her when she was little. But because of the trial, Amelia can't interfere whatsoever. No matter what's about to happen, all she can do is watch helplessly. We know that Amelia was frozen for about a hundred years, which is well above the human life expectancy. Elves can obviously live a lot longer than humans, but Betelgeuse and Regulus are definitely not elves, yet both of them have survived without aging for over a hundred years. And from what the cliffhanger implied, they were also a big part of Amelia's past. <laughs> Regulus is one of my top five characters, not because I support his decisions or like him as a person, but because I respect how well written his character is. 
He's one of the most self-absorbed villains I've ever seen in fiction, and although he's despicable, I love watching him and just seeing how he twists the meaning of different concepts to fit his warped outlook on reality. Just from the few bits of dialogue we have gotten, it's already possible to predict his opinions and reactions to different scenarios, and I feel like being able to so perfectly understand a character's mind and how they think is a pretty rare occurrence in fiction. Also, his ears had shading, so he's automatically best boy. But on a serious note, this was the best cliffhanger of the season. We've gotten one pretty much every episode, but everything about Regulus's entrance was just perfect. Easily the highlight of the episode by far, and I can't imagine anyone was able to watch that without getting goosebumps. Until Regulus arrived, the witch cult wasn't portrayed as an evil organization. Although Juice was very odd, he didn't feel like a villain. But as we know, a lot can change in a hundred years, and from what it looks like, Regulus might be responsible for what happened. Again, this episode left us with a lot of questions, so if you've got a theory about what's in the seal or how Juice turned into Betelgeuse, I'd be happy to read your comments below. I'm very thankful they didn't try to squeeze in an extra chapter like they usually do, because this week's episode ended up being the most faithful adaptation of the season. The amount of cut content was at an all-time low, and the pacing was perfect as well. Not a single moment felt rushed, and although it wasn't as exciting as some of the previous episodes were, it's most likely going to make the top 5 for me, and of course, it was another 10 out of 10 episode. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a like to support my channel, and remember you can also follow me on Twitter, or if you want to satisfy my greed, you can become a channel member for only a dollar, and you'll get access to unlisted videos, plus a cool icon next to your name in the comments. That's all I got for you guys today though, keep talking about ReZero, I'm out for now, peace.